ladies and gentlemen, on behalf of ImagingBiz.com, I'd like to welcome you to the webcast entitled Centralized Imaging and Collaboration in Today's Decentralized Imaging Business. If you have questions at any time during the presentation, you may type your question in the Q&A box located at the bottom of the interface below the presentation. Questions will be collected and answered accordingly at the end of the presentation. If you are in need of technical assistance, please dial 1-866-297-6395 and reference confirmation number 278-05665. This information is also listed on your confirmation email. Please note that this conference is being recorded. And now it is my pleasure to turn the program over to Lori Wright, Vice President and General Manager of Symantec Health. Thank you all. It's my pleasure to be here today and briefly introduce Symantec. Many of you will probably be surprised to discover the depth and breadth of Symantec as a company. We are the third largest independent software company in the world and have many brands you may know of independently but not realize that they're all part of the same company. If you use Norton at home, that's our consumer line of products. If you sign in at work and notice your mailbox being archived, that's probably happening by either our Enterprise Vault or Message Labs products. And if you go to your favorite website and see the VeriSign check mark, that is also a Symantec company. As an organization, we have a vast amount of experience in software as a service, managing over 60 petabytes of data for leading businesses and consumers across the world. If you try and understand the magnitude of 60 petabytes of information, that's the entire written works of mankind in all languages. So suffice it to say, we safely and securely manage a whole lot of data. Thousands of companies turn to Symantec to help them with their security, storage, and systems management needs. We secure and manage more information against more risk at more points than any other company in the world. So I'd like to now walk you through today's uh, agenda and introduce you to our featured speaker, Dr. Anthony Toppins. Dr. Toppins will be discussing today's healthcare pressures as it relates to the imaging business. As many of you know and have felt firsthand, the imaging business has undergone a pretty dramatic change in the last decade. Changes have brought on immense opportunity, but they've also introduced challenges. Dr. Toppins will discuss how the imaging business, how different imaging businesses can evaluate uh, and look to adopt new technologies to, ad to address these challenges and create a more profitable business. We'll then turn it over to Lewis Etheridge, who will present the Symantec Health Image Share Solution, which highlights an example of how technology can streamline image sharing and collaboration within a very decentralized healthcare system. Please also notice at the bottom of your screen, there's a box that you can use to submit questions at any time, and we'll answer these questions either as we progress through the material or at the end of today's discussion. So before I turn it over to Dr. Toppins, I'd like to give you some information on his background and experience in this arena. Dr. Toppins is a fellowship-trained musculoskeletal radiologist who practices in Dallas, Texas with American Radiology Associates. His practice covers Baylor University Medical Center and dozens of outpatient facilities and community hospitals throughout Texas. He is also a team physician for the Dallas Cowboys. He has directed, in, he has directed the purchase of several PACS platforms and their implementations and serves as the medical director for several customer facilities. Dr. Toppins is also the CIO of American Radiology. With that, I'll now turn it over to you, Dr. Toppins. Thanks, Lori. Um, and good morning and, or good afternoon, depending on what time zones uh, everyone is in. Um, I'm honored to be a part of this presentation today and uh, appreciate the opportunity. Um, so I uh, thank you to uh, Symantec and uh, Imaging Biz. Um, wanted to give you a little bit of, uh, more background um, and uh, one quick uh, correction. I'm one of the team physicians for the Cowboys. Uh, the, our orthopedic surgeons might uh, take a little exception to me, be, me being the, the team physician, but uh, I'm part of the team, um, although we're not getting out to a very good start this year, so uh, I'm not going not gonna to tout that too much uh, at this point in the season. Um, so a little bit of background on, on me in, in addition to kind of uh, frame my experience in, in this space. Um, 
I am a musculoskeletal radiologist, um, and that's my primary uh, job function. But I've kind of had a crash course in um, healthcare IT and specifically medical imaging IT over uh, my 14 years uh, in radiology, um, sort of by uh, default as I was a, a radiology resident uh, who who was, was sort of the AV nerd for a while and, and uh, was the computer geek in the department. So I, I, I was sort of the go-to person for these kinds of things. And um, it's pretty amazing looking back on, on um, over the last 14 years uh, from when I started my residency in 96 and we were developing films uh, from a, a, you know, basically wet developer to where we are today um, with everything on PACS. And uh, I think... You know, the thing that was most um, interesting about this project, and I've, I've been serving as a consultant for uh, the last few months with Symantec, um, answering some of their development questions on, on this product. And um, to me, the, the appealing thing about this is, is we have always talked a lot about PACs and um, how to uh, view images for interpretation as well as to uh, archive them. But one of the one of the pieces to kind of complete the full circle of, of medical imaging is uh, is kind of an afterthought in, in many uh, instances, and that is how do we deliver these images to to where it's most important and to where these physicians, these referring physicians are that are treating these patients, which is ultimately uh, what we're all here for. Um, and this, uh, the Symantec product, um, the image share product, Really addresses that piece, and it's and it's I think an often overlooked aspect. Um, so to start off with, uh, I wanted to go over some of the uh, pressures that that all of us in the in the healthcare um, environment are dealing with, and uh, to start with, kind of some of the internal pressures, if you will. Um, you know, we're all uh, facing the reality of uh, EMR, CPOE adoption. Uh, we're, we're facing the, this overwhelming, um, just burgeoning volume of data, uh, and the, this, this complexity of um, IT infrastructure. Uh, so, obviously, we're having to, um, in some cases, on the fly, uh, generate solutions to these to these issues, while uh, at the same time dealing with an ever um, uh, tightening budget as well as uh, human resources, and so th these things are all coming together to make for a very challenging um, medical imaging environment. So the external pressures uh, that we're also dealing with, uh, especially as, as there's increasing government scrutiny and, and um, you know legislation of medicine, we are uh, seeing you know the. A continued advancement in HIPAA, and now with high tech, we're seeing uh, more, um, you know, looming enforcement of these regulations. And we're also, uh, fortunately, seeing some uh, actual incentivization of, uh, you know, improving and developing these uh, technologies for electronic uh, healthcare records uh, and EMR systems. So, so it's you know, it's a double-edged sword, if you will. Uh, at least, at least we are heading in the right direction, and there are some incentives um, that have been developed uh, through high tech to actually uh, reimburse for some of these uh, these costs associated with this effort. Um, the meaningful use, uh, it, of course, is is the high tech um, vernacular for uh, actually employing in a meaningful way the uh, ele electronic um, health record initiative. And uh, like I said, there we're finally seeing uh, kind of some pay for performance type uh, metrics on that, and that's a good thing. Um, the other thing that that I'm seeing from an external pressure standpoint, and I this certainly uh, applies to the Dallas market, but I think it's representative of what's going on across the country, is that we have a, a an increasing complexity of of imaging. You know. Tradition, back when I started my residency in '96, a vast majority of the imaging was being done in hospitals. Uh, there were some, you know, a few large imaging centers around. Um, now uh, we're seeing a 
vastly increased number of imaging centers. We're seeing physician-to-own imaging. And so what I call the decentralization of imaging, which I'll get into more later. And, and that certainly um, speaks to, our, to the uh, middle item, middle bullet item here, the third one down, which is this um, information sharing outside of control boundaries where no longer is, is one healthcare system controlling uh, patients, but you have them you know, going from various unaffiliated imaging centers. You have physicians referring to all different places and in some cases to their own imaging centers. And we really are um, challenged with, uh, with how, to, how to deal with this image um, and information distribution in that environment. Um, certainly compliance, uh, certification audits, um, and cyber risk are, are major factors that we have to address. Um, you know, there's something in the news about every day with respect to uh, security breaches and how those are um, should be prevented and how they're responded to when they happen. Um, and a, and a, product, a product like um, what Symantec is offering uh, really speaks to that, and, and it's, I think it's very important to have a, a company with a strong security background uh, dealing in those um, aspects of uh, medical imaging, IT. Um, obviously, that last item is, is uh, very familiar to all of us in medical imaging. Uh, we are every day reminded of, of uh, how efficient we have to be and, and how much more efficient we're going to have to be in the future as we're seeing the trajectory of, uh, of imaging reimbursement going down. Um, and so, a, a, again, a product like this uh, can help us uh, you know, export or, or uh, outsource some of those functions that are not key uh, image interpretation functions of, of a practice like mine. So uh, here we have just a, a little graphic and uh, some information on, on this concept of decentralized uh, patient care and, and in my particular um, sphere of, of practice, uh, decentralization of, of medical imaging. Uh, we're, like I said, we're increasingly seeing that these images are being acquired at uh, numerous locations throughout metropolitan areas uh, like Dallas uh, and across the country. Um, no longer is this uh, is imaging confined to uh, the major tertiary, you know, tertiary referral hospital environments. Um, in addition, I, I think we have to look outside the box a little bit and, and sort of put our, ourselves in the shoes of the referring physicians. They are experiencing a very similar situation. Um, it, here in Dallas, um, We've seen numerous satellite um, community hospitals spring up, um, and we've seen physicians who have traditionally only practiced in the, you know, in the trauma center downtown now opening up satellite offices in the nice, new, you know, shiny uh, community hospital up in the, in the affluent suburb to, to you know, kind of capture some of the, the better payer mix there. And so these referring physicians are also uh, very much aware of this decentralization and it's impacting them. And we have to figure out how we're going to get their reports to them, how we're going to get their images to them when they are not sitting, you know, inside the, the ivory tower walls of the main, main, main medical center. Uh, so again, this uh, a product like uh, what Symantec is offering here uh, can address that need. Um, next slide. Um, basically, just goes into more detail on this on this new paradigm in medical imaging with this decentralization. Um, you know, the radiology practices like mine. I, I serve as our, our um, a board member here in our practice. We have uh, you know a big a big practice and it's, it's pretty diverse and complicated. Uh, we're practicing a lot of different places, um, and we really need to be able to focus on the the you know the medicine that we're delivering. And um, in in a case like this, it, it's, it'd be great to be able to outsource some of these functions uh, like image distribution and report distribution to a company that really knows what they're doing and and has all of the all of the uh, security vulnerabilities addressed. And and uh, so that. Uh, that allows me to concentrate on reading the MRIs that uh, that I enjoy. Um, the pay for performance metrics uh, we're we're all um, hearing about, and in some cases starting to see uh, some incentivization for improving the way we deliver uh, medicine. And um, I'm hoping that through products like like ImageShare, uh, we can 
see a little bit of a return on that investment and offset some of the de decrease in, in uh, revenue. Um, so one of one of the uh, evolutionary uh, items that 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 we are determining how to deal with is how do we how do we distribute these images and reports um, in in our particular practice we do every different everything listed here um, you know from hard copy images being sent with the patient or curried to a physician to uh, increasingly the use of CDs uh, and DVDs to distribute those images um, in some cases uh, in parts of our practice uh, referring physicians have access to uh, a web portal or a, a web-based PAC system and then the, the uh, Symantec product that uh, we're uh, going to show later on in this presentation and similar products um, fall under the category of internet-based internet image sharing and um, also arch there's some archival uh, products as well yeah, yeah, that are related um, products. So um, all of these you know, have their uh, benefits and certainly have uh, some challenges involved with them. Uh, going back to the early days of, of my radiology career, um, you know, we were dealing all completely in hard copy film, and obviously that was that has its drawbacks. Um, on the upside, they were relatively inexpensive, but they were very laborious um, to produce as well as to archive, uh, requiring lots of space, physical space, which is obviously a premium now. Um, they could also be easily lost, or, and and in terms of damage, you know, I've actually I have seen myself the effects of flooding on uh, file rooms. Um, actually, uh, one case a fire, um, and I've also seen myself just what time will do to hard copy images. So that is obviously an undesir uh, undesirable solution for the long term, and it's increasingly being uh, steered away from. Uh, going to the, to the next item down, the CDs and DVDs, um, they have the benefit of being digital media, um, you know, no degradation over time. Uh, they're not quite as laborious to produce, but still require a person sitting and, um, and making them in, unless you're in a larger environment producing a higher volume where you have a, a jukebox producing many an hour. Um, but the issue with those is uh, they still are easily lost or damaged. Uh, in fact, uh, arguably easier to lose or damage than a than a, an envelope full of films. Um, they certainly can't be bent, and uh, they also are basically a one location type of media. You hand it to a patient, the patient takes it with them. You get the call the next day that the patient didn't bring the CD in to see their physician, or the patient can't find the CD. Suddenly, you have an unaccounted for piece of uh, protected uh, healthcare medical information, and uh, out there, and the physician doesn't have the report or the um, images that he or she needs. So obviously, again, not the ideal solution, um, but has been kind of a necessary evil up to this point. Uh, the third item down, web-based packs. Um, this, by this, I'm referring to uh, physician, non-radiologist physician access to uh, a PAC system, and um, some, you know, some PAC systems are purely web-based, and a referring physician is given a, a login that may have some limitations of functionality. But basically, it's it's a um, clinical viewer, or it's it's a referring physician's access to the same type of PAC system that the radiologists use. The issues that I see there are number one: sometimes it's overkill. Um, it's maybe not the most intuitive thing, and uh, maybe has too much functionality for what the referring physician needs. Number two is it tends to require a lot of um, help help desk type IT support um, to walk the physicians through using the product um, and main, you know uh, when they go a month and they haven't used it and they come back around and want to use it again and they can't remember how to do it so there's a, there's a lot of support um, infrastructure required there um, the third thing that the third issue I see with that um, is that it off, often those systems require either dedicated VPN connections or uh, they may require a kind of a thick client or heavy install on the machine. 
uh, and that's undesirable for obvious reasons. You, you have referring physicians accessing this from, uh, you know, their personal computers. You have them trying to access this information from uh, within hospital um, departments and surgical suites where the IT department may have locked down um, the uh, the computer to where they can't install that kind of thick client. So, um, you know, that there are still drawbacks of that type of arrangement. Finally, getting to the uh, internet-based um, or cloud-based type image sharing, um, the the first thing I think that anyone will will have issue with or, or raise a flag about um, on the challenge side of this is the security. And again, that that goes back to you want to make sure that if you're doing this kind of thing that you're you, you know what you're doing or you outsource it to somebody someone who does or a company who does. And in this case, Symantec. I don't think any of us uh, have any question they know what they're doing when it comes to data security. Uh, that that's their uh, that's their bread and butter. Um, the, the other challenge with that is the integration with the existing PACS infrastructure. You know, we're talking about, in this decentralized model, we're talking about many different PACS uh, products, many different uh, installations and vendors. Um, and so you want a product that uh, is going to be able to integrate with those and have some support to do that. Um, something that can be uh, fairly easily uh, bolted on to an existing PACS infrastructure uh, is ideal. Um, this just uh, is a, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide, but uh, goes back to what I was saying about being able to access data from various platforms, various locations is, is critical, and that's something we have we did not have with hard copy film, and that's something that we really still don't have with the with the optical media like CD-ROMs and DVDs. Ideally, we want a platform that can be accessed simultaneously from multiple locations. You know, if we have a, a surgeon consulting with a um, an internal medicine physician or a pediatrician on a patient's case, uh, we can't have the CD in two places at once, and uh, it's tedious to try to get multiple copies of those CDs to different locations with a, with a web-based um, product like this or internet-based product like Symantex, uh, we can achieve that goal. Uh, so this, this next slide is, is along those same lines, um, just, just speaking again to this point of we have many different uh, locations and uh, organizations and facilities um, uh, throughout the the whole uh, healthcare environment that need to have access to patient information and patient images um, and we'd like a, a platform that can scale to that. Uh, speaking to the security aspect of uh, medical imaging, um, you know, this, is just, this is just a, a hot button topic. Um, like I said, we see um, just about daily uh, references to uh, security breaches, you know, whether it's you getting the call like I just recently got from my credit card company saying that uh, uh, unnamed uh, uh, large provider of credit cards uh, to consumers has uh, lost a hard drive or lost a, a briefcase um, with uh, my uh, Social Security number and other uh, billing information on it. Um, you know, we're seeing the same thing with healthcare. And um, again, this is one of the biggest challenges of uh, internet or web-based distribution and archiving. Um, and this is not to be taken lightly. Obviously, the fines are increasing, the enforcement is increasing, and there. For, I know, speaking for my practice and for myself. Um, we're not going to take any chances with this, and uh, we want uh, a company that we can trust. We want to be able to, you know, hold uh, hold our provider of, of this kind of solution uh, to task for for the security. And uh, this is not some place to skimp. Uh, going. Uh, sorry, not to beat a dead horse on this, but the HIPAA and high tech considerations um, are, are really foremost uh, for for me and for my practice. Um, but but we also realize that in this uh, diversified, decentralized imaging environment, not every facility uh, is going to have a full EMR or EHR system. Um, not every uh, facility will even have a full. Uh, a full pack system in-house. And so 
what uh, you know what we have to do is work with with what is what the existing infrastructure is in our in our customer sites. Um, and and by the way, to give you a little more background, uh, our customer portfolio um, starting in '96 when I was a resident, we were we were basically a nearly 100% uh, tertiary hospital based almost acad academic type radiology practice. We had about uh, uh, maybe 25 radiologists or so maybe up to 30, and today we have um, greater than, I'd say, 60 to 70 percent of our revenue coming from outside sources, um, and we're now a practice of almost 60 radiologists working in many, many different locations, of us, both physically and virtually, and so we're now uh, working with a lot of different systems. We're working, there are a lot, a lot more moving parts. And um, and so for for a lot of these centers that we work for that we read for and provide uh, some PAX um, platform to uh, these are these are small facilities small imaging centers community hospitals in some cases physician owned uh, imaging facilities that don't have a lot of, of uh, human resources um, they don't have a big a big you know half a floor of office space dedicated to a PAX uh, admin team like our like our big hospital does. They don't have a dedicated IT department. They don't own their own PACs, and so to achieve some of these meaningful use um, high tech um, you, know, you know requirements uh, to get some of that funding and to pass muster uh, muster with with some of these requirements, they need help. And um, so a practice like mine. Um, you know, can offer a product like this that uh, gets the images out to their to their referring physicians and and helps them archive and and assures the security of their data. Um, you know, as a pass through or as a as an incentive to use our practice um, for their interpretation, and it, and it's a great way for them to um, you know operational. Um, budget budget wise uh, pay for something like this rather than to have to capitalize it. Uh, many of these centers are, are capital poor. You know, they spend all their capital on uh, MRI scanners and on uh, fluoroscopic units and mammogram units, et cetera, on the modalities. Uh, they don't necessarily have a lot of capital left over to put into IT infrastructure. So a product like uh, Symantec's ImageShare is a, a great way to outsource that and make it more of an operating cost on a subscription type model. Um, in terms of the, the security issues, I think we've talked enough about that. Um, to, to move on to what we look for when we're looking for technology like this, whether it's image sharing or, or really any of our uh, medical imaging IT needs, um, we look at the vendor reputation. Um, in Symantec's case, uh, yeah, I think that they're a very well-known company, have a very good track record for security and, and for product support. Um, these days, we're increasingly looking at ROIs. Uh, you know, we we have to be able to justify. I have to be able to justify to my board of directors uh, when we're spending money uh, because because of the ever uh, decreasing uh, revenue revenue side or the reimbursement side. So we've got to really keep an eye on our bottom line. Uh, make sure that uh, nothing that we're doing is making the radiologist less efficient, um, and uh, alternatively, hopefully, making them more efficient, and also uh, concentrating our practice on our core. Um, our, our core competencies, which are interpreting those studies, not necessarily delivering the, the reports and images out. Um, so obviously, uh, we need something that is going to uh, you know, satisfy all the HIPAA and high-tech requirements and hopefully get some of the funding from uh, the meaningful use um, uh, requirements. Uh, also, uh, as I said before, we like a product that is, has a very thin client. Has, uh, it, it does not require, uh, you know, obviously, if, you know, physical media to be taken to all these machines. I mean, we deal with uh, thousands of referring physicians on a, uh, you know, on an ongoing basis. So we don't want to have to go out and touch all their machines if, if we can help it. Um, my my uh, IT department, uh, we have a we have, we have two two IT um, FTEs at our practice, and um, to 
to purchase a product where we have to go out and physically install it in a bunch of locations would require me to, you know, probably at least quadruple that. Um, so that's obviously not uh, not a product that we'd be very interested in if, if we can help it. So uh, this thin client idea and a web-based approach um, like Symantec's product is it really really uh, hits the bullseye on that. Um, Things that we would love, we love the idea of, of outsourcing our archiving and disaster recovery because then we're not uh, vulnerable at our at our corporate office or at our imaging centers. Um, very similar to you know some of the the home backup uh, pr uh, products that are now out there that allow us to back up our data um, in, into the cloud or into offsite locations. Uh, I'm a big proponent of that. I, I think a Unless you have a copy in, in one or two additional physically removed locations, you really haven't backed up. And I think the same same holds true for medical imaging. Um, obviously, speed, uh, reliability, and high availability are critical. And uh, we are in such a competitive environment in imaging these days that uh, we have to do everything we can to not a adversely impact our referring physicians. We want to make their lives easier. Their lives easier. Um, and we want a product they can use easily and, and always get to. These are many times situations where patient care is, is on the line um, and, and literally you know, lives are at stake, so we, we want this to be uh, you know, nearly 100% uptime. Um, and the, about, you know, the end, of this bullet, end of these bullets here on the subscription pricing, again, that speaks to the economics of imaging these days and, and whatever we can do to get into subscription models rather than having to lay out a bunch of capital or, or uh, positives for us. Um, the final uh, slide here, and, and I think my time probably is just about up, um, is just a little cost. Um, cost comparison and that I worked out very quickly and um, this is based on a, a just an average size uh, outpatient imaging center doing about 80 studies a day um, mostly cross-sectional work with a, just a few plain films that's why that number is not higher than it is because this is a this is kind of a specialty imaging center that that does a lot of MRI and, and CT work and just a few plain films but um, I just worked up a, a quick um, kind of comparison between um, Hard copy film and um, and actually and burning CDs, just to give you an idea of of what potential cost savings just for one center. And realize in our practice this is multiplied many times over because we work with so many different uh, customers. But you can see very quickly here that if you're printing all your studies, I mean, we all know that that's not a not a viable solution going forward, uh, given the costs associated with that. But even um, doing what we are currently doing, where we're where we are printing some studies, burning a lot of CDs, and then um, giving physicians access to their images online via our PAC system to a few select physicians, um, even that has um, even that, that has a significant cost involved because of the human resources. Um, and so I think any of these numbers, I, I don't know the cost of the Symantec product, and, and that's something that uh, can be talked about in follow-up uh, conversations. But um, you can see a, a, a pretty uh, convincing justification for a product like this just based on uh, our current costs associated with generating hard copies and or CD-ROMs or supporting uh, a PACS-type uh, remote viewing uh, option for the referring physicians. Thank you very much, and um, I will try to answer some of these questions that are uh, coming online uh, when I have an opportunity later on. Um, I'll hand this over to Lewis now. Thank you very much. Move along here again. Thank you. My name is Lewis Etheridge. I'm the systems engineer for Semantic Health, and I'm now going to do a brief overview of the solution that Symantec has built to address the problems that uh, Tony mentioned earlier, and then we will go into a review of the user interface that is used when sharing studies over the internet. So on your screen now, hopefully you can see a brief overview at the bottom of the connection between your existing environment to the Symantec data centers where the Symantec Health solution operates. Uh, with the installation of a small appliance that connects to your PACs, we are able to automate the transmission of information 
from your PACs up to our data centers and use all of this information in our data centers to reduce your costs and to provide business continuity as uh, we will demonstrate uh, as we go through this morning. We will be able to give you some great metrics on how this data is being used, who has access to it, how much of it uh, you are sending to us. But most importantly, we will be able to help you improve your physician outreach as you try to expand your practice. Let's take a little closer look at the actual architecture here. Now, as I mentioned, there is a gateway device that will connect uh, your internal PACs and or RIS system to our data centers and allow us to accept medical images, studies, and the reports that go with them into our data center for long-term archiving. Uh, we also give this information the ability to be shared out through the Semantic Health User Interface that we, we will be looking at in just a moment. And then we also provide the ability for people to share images back to you, even if they are not a um, subscriber to the service. So you can invite people to participate in your portion, if you will, of Semantic Health and allow them to send you studies uh, where they would traditionally be sending you CDs. They can upload it directly into your portion of our data center so that you can have automated access to that data. So let's hop in and take a look at the user interface that is used to enable all of this. So simply logging in to www.semantichealth.com uh, will provide you with an activity page. And an activity page will give everyone a simple view of things that are occurring within the Semantic Health site that concern them. Uh, you will see people that have shared studies with you or people that you have built new connections with within the service or new studies that have become available to you within the service uh, as soon as you log in. Also, up at the top, you will see a search interface that is very simple. Uh, no advanced uh, you know, training needed or to, to use this. It's as uh, simple as searching for anything on the Internet. And you can simply type in any search term, and it will search all of the text of the study header information and provide you with the results on the following screen. You will see colleagues uh, that you have within the system. You will see studies that match uh, the search terms that you put in. Uh, you will also expose down the left there a refine search pane that will allow you to further refine the search terms that you are using so that you can kind of whittle down the results here and get to the study for which you are searching. And once that's been located, you can very simply click on the patient name or the thumbnail there under the Studies tab. There we go. And it will open the study uh, within the Semantic Health interface. This will expose the study instance information, so patient names, accession numbers, uh, study dates, et cetera, that sort of information, as well as some thumbnails uh, from the various series that are a part of that study. And it will also expose the sharing interface up in the top right. And this is where you can come to share this information with anybody inside or outside of your organization. Now, the example on the screen, we've simply started typing, and you can see it's auto-filled. Um, one of the people that we've already built a connection with. Uh, and it's also offering us the opportunity to invite somebody new to the service. But in this case, we're going to select somebody that we are already connected to within Semantic Health. And at this point, we have the opportunity to put in a note to send it to that person. There we go. And upon hitting the share button, that person will receive a, uh, an email indicating that uh, some new data has become available to them within Semantic Health. Now, of course, we don't send any of that uh, within the body of the email itself, since that might contain uh, PHI. It's just basically uh, Elizabeth has shared a new, uh, new study with you. Please come to the Semantic Health website to view the contents of that. Now, we're going to demonstrate logging in as the person that that was sent to. And we'll see, just like with the previous person, uh, they land on an activity page, and then there's that study 
that has uh, just been shared with that person so they can see the note as well as a link to the study itself. And clicking again on that will open up the study. And clicking on one of the thumbnails or any of the thumbnails that are part of the series contained within will open a previewer within the website to allow access to the image information itself. Now, uh, we can display any type of image that we can receive within the service, so whether it is a still or a cinema loop, uh, we can display that right here within the browser. And this requires no uh, additional software installed on that workstation. Uh, Tony referred earlier to some of the difficulties in sharing uh, information over the Internet since you know, they have uh, security restrictions on the remote platform as to what kind of software can be installed. So we built this entire thing using standard Internet technologies, and this will allow the largest uh, percentage of people to use this type of service. Uh, also within this interface, we are able to display the report that uh, was received from the RIS. So uh, we have an interface on that gateway that can accept both the studies from your PAC system as well as the uh, reports that are generated within the RIS and associate those with the study up here on the Semantic Health website. So all of this information is available right here uh, within the service. This uh, interface also shows where uh, you, if you have invited somebody to participate uh, in your Semantic Health portal, that they can come to upload information as well. So where they might traditionally have been sending you CDs, they can simply log into the site here and hit the upload button, uh, in which case they can provide us with access to uh, the CDs that they've already burned or even uh, you know, just exported information from their local packs. They can upload that directly through the website and uh, make that available to you so that you may view it uh, the same way right here within the website or if you so desire you can even retrieve that back to your packs through the gateway that we mentioned earlier. So this completely eliminates the need for physical media and all the compatibility issues that go along with that. They can send it directly to you. The connections page uh, within the system is kind of built around uh, some of the sites, some social networking sites that people may already be familiar with, this will show you a list of everybody you have shared data with or has shared data back to you. It uh, will also allow you to uh, designate assistance within the system so that film lab uh, or personal assistance or whoever it might be that where it's appropriate within your environment can do the sharing of this information on uh, behalf of other people within your organization. So it's very flexible. Uh, model within here to define who is allowed to share, who is allowed to share on behalf of whom, and to track all of this information uh, in a fashion that allows you to see uh, everyone that has had access to or uh, performed any operations upon any of the studies within the system. So that's just a quick overview of how the Semantic Health site works. Um, I would like to point out that there is a live demo of this available at www.semantechealth.com. Uh, if you would like to go there after the presentation, you can uh, actually get a demo account and uh, use the same interface that we have demonstrated here. So let's talk for a moment about the benefits, again, of the particular service that we have implemented here. For producers of images, uh, this provides you with a central way to gain access to all of this data and to uh, share this information with anybody inside or outside of your organization. Uh, it eliminates the security risks of the physical media. You no longer have to worry about where that disk went. You can track everybody that's had access to the studies within the system. Uh, you can eliminate also the interoperability issues with CDs and PACs. Uh, I've heard from numerous customers that there are some significant concerns about allowing uh, CDs that have come into the, to the institution uh, to be 
loaded on the workstations that are connected to the rest of their infrastructure because they don't know if they are virus free. Uh, they don't know if there are auto runs on those CDs that require the installation of additional software that may not be supported within the organization. So this eliminates all of that by just transmitting the study data itself over the Internet instead of relying on the physical media. And uh, to the infrastructure points that were raised earlier, this is all operated as a service. It's a very easy to use website. And so you can add this type of functionality into your environment without requiring uh, any additional IT support within your organization. Now, for the people outside of your organization that you are sharing this data with, they can great, gain some great benefits as well. Uh, they're able to see these things as soon as the, uh, the data is sent through the gateway up to our data center. There's no more waiting for the images to arrive because they're being physically transported. Uh, again, secure and documented collaboration so that everyone can see uh, what has occurred with this study and everything, all the commentary about that study is collected in one place. And it can eliminate usability challenges associated with the fact that you know, you've got a different viewer for every institution that you deal with and uh, a lot of different tool sets that you have to be familiar with to be able to use all of the studies that are being shared in or sent out from your organization. And with that, Lori, may I toss this back to you for a uh, final commentary and Q&A? Absolutely. So I, um, I just clicked on the, the Q&A slide. I'm, I'm hoping everyone can see that. It looks like I might be losing the webcast on my end. Um, I believe we've answered most of the questions that are in queue, but if we could go ahead and open it up to the audience to see if there's any additional questions before we do a quick wrap-up. Lori, Dr. Toppins here. Um, one uh, question that I'm responding to right now that I think is uh, pertinent is, um, and I'll ask for your feedback on this as well, uh, there was a question uh, asked uh, regarding uh, can this product be used uh, for primary interpretation of uh, imaging studies outside of uh, a person's facility, and that, so I'm assuming this question was uh, from a radiologist uh, asking if this could be used as a as a remote uh, PAC system, and uh, I'm, I'm mid answer saying no. That's that's not uh, this is not designed to be a full PAC solution and a primary reading um, software solution. And would you agree with that? Yes, that's correct. It's not designed to replace the PACs. It can provide some sort of viewing capabilities, but um, it's certainly not for um, full-blown diagnostic viewing or, or PACs management. And another question I think that was uh, pertinent, uh, and I don't know, if, does everyone see the answers that I give, or are they just going straight back to the uh, person asking? I'm not clear on that, but yeah. ba <clears throat> basically um, this, uh, I'll, I'll discuss this question uh, so that everyone can uh, value for, can can benefit from it uh, even if they can't see the answers. Uh, there was a question asked: um, How does? And it's a great question. Uh, how does uh, giving referring physicians access to this type of product uh, change the role of the radiologist? Um, and my I've, my quick answer to that is. It actually, um, I don't, I don't think it adversely affects the radiologist at all. In, in fact, I'm, I'm a very um, strong believer in bidirectional radiology, and by that I mean that the communication between the radiologist and the referring physicians is critical. Um, these, this notion of uh, a referring physician sending a patient to an imaging center or to a hospital uh, or down to his, his or her own imaging, imaging facility uh, and just getting a report back and having no further discussion and not looking at the images, uh, that's uh, very foreign to me, and I think that's very um, sh a short-sighted way to think about radiology. Um, back when I started my residency, uh, back then there was really no way to remotely view images other than for hard copies to be sent to a doctor's office. Um, and so what the physicians did is they came to the radiology department. And so it was – we all spent a considerable part of our day – um, entertaining uh, visits from the referring physicians and um, going over their films, the hard copy films with them on the big uh, uh, viewers um, on the you know the hard copy films, 
and that was that was a good thing from the from the social aspect of it, and it was great for patient care because um, we were doing more than just than just sending out reports. Um, but we've lost a lot of that over the last 14 years that I've been in, in radiology because now the physicians. Um, they are so busy, and we're so busy, and they're, they're working in so many different locations, as am I. And, and I think products like uh, the Symantec Image Share and, and others um, getting it may reestablish that communication a little bit. And um, you know, if a physician can pull up these images, and I can pull them up on my PAC system, and we can get on the phone, or we can get on an IM session, and go over that study. It's more efficient than that physician having to come to the hospital or come to my imaging center physically. And I think it, it makes it more convenient for them, and it certainly, in my opinion, improves the, uh, the, the accuracy of our interpretations and the overall um, uh, medical care of that patient. And I'd like to add, too, there was another question around the installation, and that's one of the things that we've spent a lot of time really making sure that we got right to, was to, to not have a complex install. Um, and so as far as the question on how long it actually takes, it's as simple as getting the appliance to your site and plugging it up to your machine. There's a couple of your PAC system. There's a couple of commands that have to be put in. Um, but, you know, we, we say it takes hours. It, it really takes minutes depending on if you have all the information there that you need to get up and running. Okay, so I, as the moderator, I'm not certain if we can open up the lines to any additional Q&A. Would you like for me to open up the lines on my end? That would be great. Okay, all lines are currently open and interactive. Right, any other questions from anyone in the audience? Nope. Okay, well, thank you again for joining us today. Um, as you evaluate how to advance image sharing within your own practices, Keep in mind that Symantec is here and we are ready to go to work for you. We have a team of Symantec Health Specialists that are able to present a more detailed demo of what you saw today um, to either you or your extended team and help you along your path uh, of evaluating these new technologies and the associated cost savings. As I mentioned in the opening, we are the leader in security and data management. We have the most experience of any company to safely handle all of your patient information. Not only do we reduce the image sharing costs, but we give you a higher value of service to expand your referring phys physician network. Um, and I mentioned a, a bit about our installation, but the rapid implementation guarantee means you can be up and running in, in a very short period of time. Um, we have a very extensive solution portfolio designed around the unique needs of healthcare, and we really look forward to uh, gaining your trust in this business. Uh, next. Last closing slide here are a few URLs that may be of interest. Lewis mentioned you can go to our website and take a guided tour of our image share product, uh, or you can email us at the alias here to get more information. We thank you again for your time today and look forward to the opportunity to work with you in the future. Uh, Lewis and Dr. Toppins, thank you very much as well. Uh -huh, thank you. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. This concludes today's conference call. Thank you for participating. You may all disconnect.